Hello students, in our previous video we learnt about physiology of digestion. In that we learnt that throughout the digestive tract various enzymes are secreted by different glands. These enzymes are also called as digestive juices and they break complex food into simpler substances. The process called as digestion. We know that digestion starts in mouth itself. Here food is chewed and mixed with salivary enzymes like tiny, which converts starch into maltose. This partially digested food is called as bolus, which enters the stomach. Here it is digested for 3 to 4 hours. Glands in stomach called as gastric glands secrete various chemicals like hydrochloric acid that is XCL which kills bacteria and provides acidic medium for activation of enzyme pepsinogen to pepsin its active form gastric glands also release mucus which protects stomach wall from acid the partially digested food material in stomach called chyme passes through the pylorus part of the stomach into small intestine. This passing of food is regulated by pyloric sphincter. In the small intestine, in the small intestine, chyme comes in contact with three different secretions: pancreatic juice, bile juice, and intestinal juice. juice. Pancreatic juice contains inactive enzymes like trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, amylases, lipases, and nucleases. Proteins in chyme are further digested to smaller polypeptides and amino acids by trypsin and chymotrypsin. These are the active forms of inactive enzyme trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen. Students, pancreatic juice require basic pH to show its activities. This pH change from acidic to basic is brought about by bile salts. Bile salts, as you know, are produced by liver and stored in gallbladder. They are secreted in small intestine to neutralize acid which is coming from stomach. Now fats present in chyme are broken down by the enzyme lipases present in intestine into diglycerides and monoglycerides. Do you know students, fats are very large molecules and hence a lot of time and energy is needed to digest such large molecules. So to reduce both time and energy, first these large molecules are converted into small molecules with the help of bile salts. This process of conversion is called as emulsification. Thus, emulsification is conversion of large fat molecules into small fat droplets. Recall that bile also helps in changing pH of the food that is coming from stomach from acidic to basic. Since this basic pH is required for activation of enzymes that are present in intestinal juice. This emulsification process helps in faster digestion of complex fat molecules. Other enzymes like amylases convert smaller carbohydrates to glucose and sucrose. Nucleases digest nucleotides of DNA and RNA to simple nucleic acids. With the students, the process of digestion ends in small intestine. Thus, we see that at the end of digestion, complex and big molecules like starch, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and DNA and RNA are broken down or digested into smaller molecules respectively. These smaller molecules are easily absorbed and assimilated in our body via blood. This undigested and unabsorbed food contains large portion of water and it 
is important to conserve this water. So much of this water is absorbed in the large intestine and the undigested residue is made concentrated. The residue so formed or left is known as stool or feces. It is temporarily stored in the rectum till it is excreted out through anus. Thus, very little digestive activity occurs in large intestine. Mostly, absorption occurs here. It is importantly involved in absorption of water and salts. Here, two important processes occur, that is absorption and assimilation. Now, let's understand them in detail. Absorption of food. These simpler substances after digestion do not require further structural simplification and the absorption process can start. In absorption process, the end products of digestion which are formed in the intestine are passed into the blood or lymph. Digested food is absorbed by the walls of intestine and passed on to the blood. Maximum absorption occurs in the small intestine. Students, pause the video, take a second and think why maximum absorption happens in small intestine? Yes, you already know that inner lining or inner wall of intestine has numerous finger-like projections called villi. These villi help in increase the surface area for absorption. Villi also have a rich supply of blood vessel, which take the absorbed nutrients to all over the body cells. The next is assimilation of food. Students, assimilation means the incorporation of absorbed food materials into tissue cells as their internal and homogeneous component. Thinking what is it? In simple words, assimilation means to use the absorbed food materials in producing energy or other components like DNA, RNA proteins that are required for our functioning. For example, the final product of fat digestion that is fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed and then utilized by other organs to produce energy. The excess amount of fatty acid or glycerol or we can say unused fatty acid and glycerol are again converted into fats and then stored in adipose tissue. Similarly, sugars, the end product of carbohydrate digestion, are used to produce energy by our cells. Can you guess by which process? Yes, by cellular respiration. We will see this in our next videos. The excess sugar is converted back into carbohydrate called as glycogen in liver and stored there. Similarly, amino acids or building blocks of proteins are utilized to synthesize different proteins required for muscles and body. The students, we have seen how food that we eat is broken into simpler substances and then absorbed for use by our body. Students, you know that glucose is produced at the end of carbohydrate digestion. So the question is, where does it go or oh, what happens to it? As we already said, glucose produced after the digestion of carbohydrate is absorbed by blood. From the blood, it enters into cells of various tissues and then utilized to generate energy. The process is called as cellular respiration. We will learn about the cellular respiration in our next video.